Hi everyone, Anna Brandt here. Today I'm going to give you a studio tour. Now if you are a newborn photographer, we all have studio enemies, myself included. This is my fourth studio since I moved into studios when I was pregnant with my second daughter 14 years ago. My very first studio was only 500 square feet and I only paid $515 a month. I had that studio for a year before I moved into the center of town and went to a 2,500 square foot studio. The studio that I'm in now, the space that we're in, is only a thousand square feet. I have another thousand square feet for production and sales. I would love a studio five times this size. I would love one that has natural light and indoors and outdoors and my dream studio has a lot of features that hopefully all of you get to enjoy one day. But right now we're going to focus on the studio that I have. Whether you're working out of your home or a garage or you have a tiny studio or a great, great big studio, the idea is you want to make sure that it's clean, organized, and efficient in whatever space you're working in. Don't have studio envy and let it hold you back. Just try to enjoy the space that you do have and hope that in the future you can upgrade. And if you do have one of those big, beautiful studios, then I hope you enjoy it and just try to stay organized as much as you can. So I'm going to give you a little tour of my studio and go over as well the things that I think you should really have and the things that are just more of luxury. I have a lot of things in the studio and I certainly don't need every single item in here to do an efficient newborn session. You really only need a couple of things. However, as we grow and as we purchase, we always want new things. And with myself, I quite often get bored. So I want to constantly replenish my, my stash as well as purge the old. So important. If there's something you're not using, get rid of it. I purge pretty much on a weekly basis here and at my home because I don't really want clutter. I want to constantly clean things out. So here we go. Okay, in this corner, I hang the baby outfits. So I have a mixture of outfits with bonnets as well as wraps and different types of textures. You can see that there's many different types of textures as well as different outfits and accessories that are usually sometimes attached. So what we try to do is organize kind of by color. Sometimes it'll be by a particular outfit. Um, we may kind of bundle those together or maybe a particular texture. If there's a bunch of mohair things, we may keep those together. But we try to keep the color palette very similar. So for example, if we're looking for grays, that we go to the gray hats, as well as in some of these areas, we may have an area that has more of of the ears and keep those all in one spot because sometimes people want ears so let's just put all the ears in one section so trying to keep color tones similar as well as the style similar you know I've gone back and forth with organization sometimes I want to put all the bonnets together and all the outfits together and all the wraps together but then quite often um, it kind of blends the two so right now we just try to keep it similar in color and texture these bins are from Ikea. And what's great about the bins is you can store a lot of things. For example, headbands. So headbands go on boards and we try to keep them organized and go through them every single week and we store them in here. That way our customer can just pull them out as they need. Because we have so many wraps, we organize the bins with different colors um, that have all different textures. So you can see that this is pinks and blushes. Whereas if we go to this bin, there's more neutral colors. So all of these bins are all different wraps. And here are additional materials as well as little diaper covers and additional accessories for a little bit older babies that may not fit hanging up on the wall. So having these storage units is so great because you can just take the whole bin out and my client can go through it and pick through diaper covers and things like that. And then when we're done, we can just put it away. Okay, so here we have all of our basic wraps you can see by color. We always keep more than one color because we do photograph a lot of twins and I usually photograph two newborns a day. So if both newborns want a cream wrap, one is going to be in the laundry. We want to make sure we have several of the same cream wraps. With twins, we always ask the parents if they want the same color or similar. That's why we have duplicate colors and similar. If you're just starting out, you just need one of each color and then I would suggest that you 
just add another of each color. You want a good range of neutrals as well as female and male colors to appeal to your client's taste as well as your own style. In these bins, we have additional wraps that maybe won't really go here on the wall, but they're bigger and looser and they're more by style. And that way we know which bin has which particular wrap. Again, you have to still kind of keep your bins organized and make sure that you can easily get to all of the different colors and different styles. Here you can see is my wall of furs and fulcates. These are all faux, so they're not real. And we try to do them by color. So you can see that there are different styles. Uh, many of these soft curly furs are from Mimosa House. Some of these other styles are from our own store. Um, but there's only really, I believe, our own store and Mimosa House in here. And they're all pretty soft and we just try to keep them by colors. What we do below is below we try to keep textured layers. So with the textured layers, we want to make sure that, again, we can kind of see the colors, open them up, and go out. And trying to keep this organized is honestly a full-time job. So if you look in here, you can see that by folding these layers, we can see the different colors, grab them, and go. We actually now have a woman that comes in every single morning and helps organize our studio. Because we try to keep it organized, and it takes a lot of time. On this wall, we have all of our blankets. And keeping these organized and facing all the same way seems to be impossible. I would love all my blankets to be folded out that way instead of going sideways, but sometimes it's really challenging. So I think the idea is to keep them folded, keep them clean, and keep them organized. We do quite often stick scented sachets in here to keep them smelling fresh. And we make sure that we have some um, moth bags to keep the moths away. Felted layers, again, are folded and try to, you know, kept it, be kept in and clean. If you're just starting out or you have a small supply, you just want to make sure that you have thin and thick blankets. So some of these are very thin, and then what we have over here is filler blankets. These blankets are the fillers that would go underneath the thin blankets. So really all you need is one or two really thick blankets, and then you can just get some thinner ones that you can just transition out. I would say you need about four or five different blankets to start with of a neutral color, a girl for a boy, a girl a blanket for a, a blanket for a boy and a blanket for a girl, as well as some thicker, thicker blankets. When we come over here, you see we have a continuation of blankets and we also have extra wraps. So this bin is filled, you can see, with duplicate wraps of what's on the table next to it. So what's on the table are these are wraps that we grab almost every single day and that's why we have them out. And then in our bin is a duplicate set. Again, for twins or triplets or two sessions in one day, we wanna make sure that we always have a backup. In this area, we have a play mat for kids as well as a table um, that we do have two little chairs for. We have a coffee station with coffee and tea for the parents. So this first bin is the supplies for the coffee and tea. The rest of the bins are toy bins. And in my first studio that was only 500 square feet, the one thing I did have was I had a basket of toys underneath the ordering table because I know that you have to keep those toddlers busy. So we have full train sets and cars and things like that. So regardless of how big or small your studio is, is if you're going to work with newborns, eventually a sibling will come along with it, and it's a good idea to have some toys. We do keep, obviously, sweet treats in the jars. We keep gummy bears, which seem to be sometimes more popular than lollipops, and we do keep peanuts in a jar. Peanuts are great for protein for the parents, but because of peanut allergies, we make sure we keep them in a separate jar. And kids don't really go in there without their parents' permission, so even though it's out, um, it's usually pretty safe there. Right next to it, we have our changing table. On the changing table, you'll see that we have these blue pads. These are chucks. These are not puppy pee pads. You can get them at Amazon.com. They're medical grade. There's no scent and there's no chemicals, and we use them for changing. What's great is they're nice and disposable, and you can throw them away, and they keep the changing pad sanitary between clients. We always keep wipes, lotion, and we stock diapers, uh, cloth diapers, 
and regular diapers because quite often our clients run out of diapers. We do keep boppy pillows for girls and boys for our nursing mothers to make sure that they can have a little bit of support. The covers are removable and washable. This is our studio side. All told, this side is probably only less than 400 square feet. You don't really need that much room. Again, my dream studio would be about four times the size. But right now, this is the space that I have, and so I try to make the best of it. On the left, you can see that I have my nests hanging on the wall. Below that, I have my yoga balls, one for me and one for my assistant, that are resting in a bathtub, which we use for milk baths. Next to it are all of my backgrounds for the floor or for the wall that go into a portable storage filing system. And then I have two bean bags. I have my Paloma shell bean bag, as well as this soft bean bag is from Pottery Barn. I have my big fan, as well as a cart that holds all of my newborn accessories, a stool, and then a bench that holds some backgrounds in the bench as well. When we're looking at the papers, I have 12 feet paper and nine feet paper, all mounted to the wall, as well as my lights, which are also mounted to the wall and a tracking system. I use Profoto lighting, and I'm usually using just the light on the left, and sometimes I'll use the light on the right for a fill. What's great about the tracking system is I can just pull the lights down, and we don't have to worry about cords, which is what's great about the Profoto system. We don't need to worry about cords getting caught in children's feet. Over here behind the curtains is where we try to keep prop storage. These are simple shelving from Home Depot and we try to organize the baskets and bowls that we need for newborn sessions.